I got a model loader, and I want to apply an albedo texture to it, and then use the vertex normals, or maybe a normal texture, to apply some cool lighting, and then add specular lighting for shininess, and upgrade to a better lighting model. But this is not physically based, right? Let's see how I implemented all this and the math behind it. I started by loading the model in the engine, but the meshes were not found and the materials were not loaded. And after some digging I found out that using the FBX model was more difficult than I thought, and to fix it I just switched to GLTF and then it was all good. But before writing the shaders and all that, I jumped into RenderDog to check that the textures were loaded correctly, and they were. After getting everything into place, the result is pretty underwhelming. Then I wanted to apply some lighting but got hit by maths, more specifically the rendering equation, which looks pretty scary at first, but it really isn't. Let's get it turn by thermo. The result of the equation is the outgoing radiance, which is the color emitted by the surface. Then there is the incoming radiance, which is the beam of light hitting the surface. But we can't have the outgoing radiance equal to the incoming radiance, right? Because all the surfaces will just have the color of the light, which is not what we really want. So here comes the BRDF, which is the myth of the equation. It describes how the outgoing radiance reacts to the incoming radiance. We'll go into more detail on that later. Then there's the light angle factor, cos theta, which tells us how much the light affects the surface based on the angle between the surface normal and the light direction. If the factor is negative, we just set it to zero because we can't have negative light. And all of this sits inside an integral, because we need to calculate the outgoing light for each light source or direction around the hemisphere. But in real time rendering, we don't really do that. Now, with the rendering equation out of the way, we can just focus on the first BRDF, which is the Lambertian BRDF which is the simplest one. This BRDF assumes that the incoming radiance is scattered equally in all directions around the hemisphere, so the pixel color ends up being just the albedo color, and this is how the full equation looks after applying the Lambertian BRDF. After implementing everything, the result looks okay, I guess. And here is the shader code. What I did was using the vertex normals, which tells the direction in which each triangle points. To add more detail, I switched to a normal texture, which tells the direction in which each pixel points, resulting in more detailed lighting. When visualizing the normals, I noticed that no matter how much I rotate the model, the pixel normals still pointed in the same direction, which is not right. To fix it, I read this interesting article from LearnOpenGL which is all about tangents and repeat tangents. It's pretty math involved, but it fixed the issue. And then everything looked good. I mean, check out the detail in the motorcycle seat. It looks good and all, but in the real world, some materials have those highlights, called specular highlights. To add them, I implemented the Fong lighting model. In the Lambertian BRDF, we didn't have the highlights because no matter the camera position, we get the same amount of light. In the Fong BRDF, we reflect the light direction around the surface normal, and the closer the camera to the reflected vector, the more light it gets, making the specular highlights. We control the shininess of the material by modifying the specular power factor. In the end, we can take the Lambertian rendering equation and add the specular factor and the ambient factor for surfaces that are not facing any lights. And the implementation is pretty straightforward. But then came another guy called Blin and they combined their names and came out with the Blin Fong PRDF. The difference is that it uses the half vector, which is the vector between the light direction and the view direction and the closer the half vector to the normal vector, the bigger the highlight. The end result looks a little bit more convincing. And the implementation is pretty similar. 
Next, I wanted to implement physically based rendering, but before that, I also really wanted to modify the material system because it sucked. I had the async importer which creates the mesh and the material. The material is owned by the mesh. The importer creates a model that owns the mesh. The model is then sent to the renderer which checks if the Vulkan descriptor set for the mesh has been created. If not, it creates it and then renders the mesh. I mean, it, it, it gets pretty confusing, right? The new system has the importer which loads the mesh geometry and the material inside the material library owned by the application layer. Then the mesh only holds the ID of the material. The model owns the mesh, and then the renderer owns the material manager that takes care of the renderer specific resources, keeping the Vulkan and asset code separated. There are still some things that need to be done, but for now I think it's okay. Now let's understand physically based rendering, or PBR for short. What is PBR? PBR is a rendering approach based on real-world light interaction. For the rendering equation to be considered physically based, the BRDF inside it needs to follow two rules. To be based on the microfacet surface model, which says that any surface on a microscopic level is still rough and light is never perfectly reflected. And the second rule is that it must be energy conserving, meaning it can reflect more light than it receives. To implement the PBR, I again turn to my best friend LearnOpenGL. And I really recommend you to read the article for more in-depth explanation. After writing the shaders and everything, I ran the application and the result was bad. It was very bad. After checking with RenderDoc, I found out that inside the GLTF model, the roughness, metallic and ambient occlusion map were all packed in a single texture. So what I did was simply unpack them in the shader, but the result was still bad. I opened the model inside the Windows Mode Reviewer, and my result was completely different. After two days of digging, I found out that for the last year I've been using the wrong format for the swap chain images. I don't have a deep understanding on linear, nonlinear colors and gamma correction, but after I switched the swap chain images format to a linear color format and did gamma correction manually in the shader, the result was really good. Now let's understand the PBR rendering equation. We still have the Lambertian term there, but we divide it by pi in order to be energy conserving. Then we have the cook torrens equation, which is equal to that. Let's understand it term by term. D stands for the distribution factor that, based on the material roughness, approximates the density of normals aligned with the half-wave vector, creating the specular reflections. F is the Fresnel function, which states that the steeper the viewing angle, the stronger the specular reflection. Then, last but not least, G is the geometry or shadow masking function, which approximates how much of the microfacets are occluded or shadowed, reducing the visible specular reflection. We need to compute the geometry function twice, once for the view direction and once for the light direction. It can be best seen here. Now, let's see a comparison between all the lighting models described. I posted the code for the PBR shaders and everything in the description.